to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter into that celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Holy God, souls of all love, on the night of this betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading from chapter 12, Exodus, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall I mark for you the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel, and the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join in its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided into portions to the number of the people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly, a whole assembly congregation of Israel shall slaughter it, slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast over the fire, which is head, its legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you should eat it. Your loins, your gird, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. <coughs> For I pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt. But the human being and the animals on all the gods of Egypt will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be signed for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be the day of remembrance for you. You shall, re you shall celebrate as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Here ends the reading. I will fulfill my vows to the 
the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the, in the courts, courts of the Lord's house, in, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The second reading is from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remem remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here ends the reading.
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Write your commandment on our hearts, O God. Remind us each time, every time, what Jesus brought to the world as gift of salvation. Write your commandment of love on our hearts, O God so that we live our lives every day in and through you. Take our hands into yours. Lead us one step at a time. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. Monday Thursday comes from that word mandate, the commandment, the new commandment Jesus gave his disciples. John chapter 13, we just go a little before to John chapters 11 and 12. John chapter 11 is raising of Lazarus from the dead. Jesus makes that declaration, I am the resurrection and the life, to Martha. <coughs> Lazarus is raised because he can hear his shepherd's voice. And once Lazarus is raised, that occasion, that year, that time, when it was the 
for Passover. And as usual, people gathered to celebrate and to remember that Passover. We find that people actually gathered more in number just to check out who this Lazarus was. Was he really alive? How come somebody is back from the dead that we have not seen before? So Lazarus sitting at the table with Jesus, with the disciples, and Mary anointing the feet of Jesus is something that happens as Jesus prepares for his journey to the cross. And what strikes us is this, that Jesus knew very well beforehand who was to betray him. Yet, Jesus broke the bread and shared with Judas too. Pause for a moment. What would we do if we knew already that the person has or had a knife in his or her hand and was ready to stab us in our back? What would be our reaction if we knew already that the one you had trusted, the one in whom you had put all your faith and belief, actually was pursuing another line altogether. <laughs> Judas was already in touch with those who were ready to pay him just to betray Jesus. Yet, Jesus washes the feet of Judas as well. The new commandment that Jesus gives does not exclude people who do not return the love, who do not respond as any human should, which teaches us, which tells us that at any given time, a community is never a homogeneous community. Yet, God loves us and wants us to retrace our steps back to the cross. That is the meaning of the love commandment. The moment selfless love fills in our heart, there is no place for fear, anxiety, doubt. Faith drives out, fear drives out all this. Faith drives out fear. It is only that love, faith, hope in Jesus simply because Jesus was one who didn't just say, teach about love. He showed it in action. Imagine washing the feet. How messy it must have been. What is it, what kind of love is it that can look past that messiness, look past even that intense hatred in the other, look into the eyes of the other and say, I still love you because God loves you. <clears throat> Does this mean that there is no place for repentance? That there is no place for remorse? You find that even Judah <coughs> realized, recognized what he had done. He went through that process of <coughs> bitterness. What have I done? It's only because he did not believe in the forgiveness, believe that God can forgive him, that he chose to end his life. <coughs> Peter denied Jesus. Yet, 
When Jesus turned around and looked at Peter, that loving look was enough to reduce Peter to bare minimum. Who am I? How is it that God considers us worthy to love us despite who we are? John 13, the Last Supper, is a lasting supper simply because God's love in Jesus fills our heart. <coughs> For us to take this back home as the message, the mandate, a new commandment Jesus gives us, to love one another as Jesus loved us. As Jesus loves us. Amen. The peace that passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in Jesus who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world this, during this holy week, humble the powerful, and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the wine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places, that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. <clears throat> Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of the others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they know and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near. Merciful God, because you are her. God who sits at the table with us, Grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating their First Communion and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who brings new life out of death. We pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our God of glory, Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As, As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending name. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus. In a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May, May this sacrament of your body and blood so, so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. For I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like a slave who lies in the grave. Whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pits. In dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily. And all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors and I am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day, all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion. And 
darkness is my only companion.